Hey everyone, J.K. Whitey from the Baseball Rebellion here. Got this week's breakdown for you. And um, today I thought it would be fun since uh, the Major League Baseball draft was uh, last week to, to look at some of the guys, especially one guy, the number one pick, Royce Lewis um, from J. Sierra High School. Um, and he's an outfield infielder and uh, he was the first pick. I think he signed for... Uh, something like 7.7 .7 million or something like that. But I always like to look at these guys and see if I can determine a little bit about how their career is going to go. Now, there's a lot of different factors, defense, arm strength, uh, size, and things like that that go into a, a full career and, and kind of the changes and adjustments a player makes as he uh, is, you know, matures and works his way up through the ranks. And uh, so I thought I would take a swing, having never really seen it before, to be honest with you. Um, a couple uh, videos ago, I did Jordan Adele, who I think ended up getting selected in the top uh, 10, uh, I think went to the, the Angels. And I really liked his swing, actually. it was uh, I was actually really impressed. And, and after looking at them both now, uh, I, still th I think his is actually a little bit better. But uh, we're going to look at Royce right here, who uh, obviously was projected super high and went number one. And uh, this is the same uh, little home run derby they were at. They were both at, and I love this video because very rarely do you get the side and the back video at the same time, which is really, really nice. We can see where the barrel goes and some other things. And uh, I'm just going to let the swing play out for you real quick so you can just get a look for it. Um, overall, I mean, the kid's super athletic and uh, good build, uh, side, good frame to build upon as he continues to, to grow and then put on some size and, and some weight, some positive weight. And uh, his swings here are, are super quick. That was the first thing you just kind of notice about his, his swing is just that quickness. And a lot of them have that. Um, and so we're going to break it down from the start here. And I really like, you know, the leg kicks and I like how he moves forward. Something that he does pretty obviously is you can see him really, if we're looking at his, his back foot right here, you can see his, he really turns that toe in uh, much more so than, than most. You're seeing more and more people kind of do that uh, to, to help, I think, with that inside angle of that back leg, help kind of propel them forward a little bit easier. So when he goes to, uh, you know, goes to pick up his front leg, uh, you can see him really kind of turn that hip in and really sit on that, uh, you know, kind of sit down on the back knee just a little bit, but uh, not not so much where he, where he just kind of squats and doesn't go anywhere, but he really keeps this nice inside angle right here. You can see his knee inside of his foot, and then he just kind of drifts forward just a little bit before he starts to put his foot down. And uh, at the same time, you can see him prepare his barrel. So you can see him go uh, as he's going forward and getting his lower half uh, kind of cooled in and set. You're also going to see his knob start to come down, point more towards the catcher. His barrel gets about 45 degrees, um, and then he lands. So we're always going to kind of look at how he prepares and how he lands. And so um, a, a lot like Jordan Adele, very nice lower half upon landing. You see in a, a more open front foot than most kids uh, his age. From the back view, you can really see it over here. You can see his front foot is, is open. Now, it's not you know past the pitcher or point at shortstop, don't get me wrong, but when he rotates his hips, he allows his front foot to open, and that's what we try to get our kids to do you know, through our online program and through our, our in-person lessons is to have them understand that the front foot is allowed to rotate open. Um, it's not something you want to force with your ankle or your foot, but it's something that uh, kids can really get used to doing at an early age if, they're, if they understand that it's okay. A lot of coaches told me that it was a bad thing for your front side to open like that. And, uh, and so for me to work through that is really tough because I have to undo a lot of stuff that I used to do. And then same with a lot of kids that come in when they're older who've had some previous instruction. So he does that really well um, right off the get-go. Um, at the same time, you see as, as his hips have begun to rotate, at the same time he put his foot down, his back knee started to bend a little bit more. Uh, you can actually see on the back side here, you can see his heel starts to come off the ground. Uh, as his front heel goes down, he begins to plant into the ground. I really like that. Now, I do think that he's a little bit early in the backside um, upper body, meaning his back elbow has already kind of come down to the slot. Um, his head's in a pretty good position, but I think – you know, he's landing and kind of pulling the elbow and shoulder down, maybe just a, a touch too soon um, to, to kind of get into that slot, maybe comfortably a little bit too soon, too early, uh, which can cause some, I think, a lack of power, to be honest with you. And uh, it's a lack of stretch and ability to really get below the ball. But you can see him very much like Jordan Adele do a great job here of keeping his head pretty much in the exact same place. And that's something you see amongst all high-level players uh, we can't stress it enough when we do these videos because there are three or four things that that great players like him and and all all big leaguers do, and that's one of them. And that keeping the head in the exact same place it was when the front foot hit the ground. Now, if they're fooled on an O2 pitch, curveballs, sliders from you know big league pitchers that are like 85, 90 mile per hour sliders and cutters, 
yeah, okay, sometimes their head's going to be forward and they, they're going to miss a ball or hit a grounder. But that's not their best swings. You know, this is a this ball is crushed. Uh, you can see his barrel lining up really nicely behind the ball as he turns into contact. Um, lower half through the turn is very, very good. You can see his back foot moves a little bit, uh, which is great. Front leg gets nice and straight, as we like to see. And then from the backside view here, you can really see, again, the shoulder angle. You can see his back shoulder go down below his, his chin. His front shoulder comes up above his ear, or, or, or at least even with his ear. Uh, you can see this nice tilt in, this nice the small curve in, uh, in his right side. You see the big, long uh, curve on his left side here showing us that he's really tilting in and really that comes kind of down back here and that's where we really want to see it and we saw that in Jordan's swing um, a month ago or so you can see that real that that bend in the back right here not bend in the back like towards the spine towards the back but in his obliques um, into his side kind of down towards his pocket as his hips rotate open you can see the barrel really start to get blurry back here I think Jordan's barrel path I think I liked a little bit better I think it was a little bit more up but but this is still really good um, you can see his eyes behind contact here. I noticed that when I was, you know, watching this this video uh, fully on YouTube, uh, you know, they were throwing him pretty quick here between pitches. So I don't know if, if the having to reset and get ready for the next pitch is something that was maybe causing him to take a slightly different swing than normal. Uh, that's something if you're a coach listening, watch out for. Don't rush your hitters too much. I understand you have a limited amount of time, but you know, shorten the round down and have the kids take better swings as opposed to. Um, to take in 100 swings in a minute and then make them kind of rush and, and not the best that they could be. Um, so I wonder if some of that got to him a little bit here, but honestly, it's still a really good swing. You see the barrel coming up still behind the ball. I don't. I just think he gets his barrel um, coming up a little bit later than than someone like Jordan. But again, it's it, at, at any point, it's still like on the barrel going up. Uh, you can see a little bit of a flatter extension uh, than Jordan too. You can see his arms a little more straight here. Jordan's were a little bit more up. Um, I think overall, as, as a as a group of swings, um, he has a pretty nice finish. Nothing uh, nothing spectacular. Um, kind of like I would say a little more kind of a rod ish. You kind of see him finish a little bit more. Uh, like he kind of rolls his head forward just a little bit after contact. Again, you can see him really getting the barrel behind the ball. But I think just a little bit late. I think he you know right here his barrel is just getting below his hands and, and his hands are kind of out in front of him a little bit. So I think it's just not as as clean and that comes and starts from back here again as he's putting his foot down uh, instead of like pulling back a little bit longer um, towards the stands behind him and creating a little bit more of a stretch I think he's pulling in just a little bit early down here in the back and causing some some barrel path issues and you know not not bad enough to to, to hurt him on any BP pitcher uh, but but you know some things like that tend to catch up to guys um, as they face big big league pitching and or, or just, you know, professional pitching for that matter, faster fastballs, balls that break more, cut more, cut later, things like that really matter for guys and, and being able to get the barrel behind the ball as soon as possible and below the hands as fast as possible back and down here by the catcher like you see Ryan Braun and Chris Davis and, and Gomez and a lot of these guys do. Um, you know, if he can't make that adjustment in the game, it's going to be tough. But he's athletic enough for sure. Again, lower half is, is just about picture perfect. I mean, his knees almost match. Front leg is straight, front toes are in the air. You can really see from the backside his heel up right here very clearly. Um, you know, again, you can see that tilt, and you can see how much he's rotating. You can see how much his body is open. His belly button is towards the pit, uh, shortstop. His chest is towards the shortstop. And I think a lot of people don't realize how open these guys get at contact here, um, and, and how how the rotational parts of the body really get open and really fire and really turn. Um, and there's nothing to be held back at contact here. There's no more turning to do. So he's He's essentially used everything he's got on this swing, and that's how it should be. You know, you should swing uh, the bat like a sprinter would, would run a 50-yard dash. You know, all, everything you got, um, you know, for the most part, staying within your mechanics. Anytime you swing harder and go out of your mechanics, you have a, a tendency to uh, to maybe make some mistakes. But he has a really good swing. I, I think he's going to be fine. I think he should probably make some adjustments and, and think about kind of where his barrel path is going because I think he tries to create a little too much speed out in front of him um, instead of more behind him where you see like the best of the best and if that's who he wants to be if he's a first round pick and he wants to be uh, the best of the best and I think that's that's an adjustment he's going to need to make um, and you can see on this really on this first one how really he kind of pulls the knob kind of towards his shoulder and kind of out in front of him I guess his inside pitch you know you can see the pitch is super inside so he made it over here on the, the right and so he made a, a bit of adjustment there uh, but it's just something that uh, I noticed kind of throughout his swings was just a little bit of a shallower barrel path. Um, but anyway, uh, best of luck to this guy. Hope he does well. I'm excited to see how he turns out. 
uh, just like all the other young guys that, that got drafted, and, and hopefully they have great careers. And it's always fun to watch uh, rising prospect swings who, who maybe aren't as refined as they will be, um, as opposed to some big leaguers who have been there for 10 years already and are bona fide all-stars. So anyway, best of luck to Royce, and uh, thank you guys so much for listening today. And uh, please comment below and let me know if you have any questions about our program or about this breakdown in particular. Thanks.